Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So, four episodes down today, and I'm not sure how many to go. I mean, I guess, okay, never mind. Technically, this is the fifth, so five episodes down? I mean, I'm, I'm just recording this now, but you're watching it. Regardless of however many episodes I do today, there are so many exciting cards today that I have got to keep talking about them. I mean, we start off this day with an absolutely incredible card, Shadow Mortality, a 15-mana card. Check that episode out at some point. Also, make sure you check out the episode on the commander that I did not think would ever exist with Tavit? Tavit? Sorry, I'm not sure they exactly how to pronounce the name. Seller of Secrets, a very exciting commander. Speaking of which, if you like cats and dogs, or cats or dogs, or just rain, I guess, uh, because it's raining cats and dogs, Ginny Faye, make sure you check out that episode too at some point. But don't leave just yet because, my goodness, we've got what might be the most mythic of all the mythic cards of this set. This thing is going to be incredibly expensive. It is way too good. What in the world does Burglar's Halo Stash do? Well, before we jump into the episode, you really need to blame Eddie because I was actually working on a previous episode when this card was spoiled and then Eddie pinged me with a ton of recommendations for this card. So yeah, you can thank Eddie for all these recommendations by blaming him in the comments below. Thank you. And now with that said, let's jump into it. First up, a big thank you to MTG Goldfish for the translated version of this card. Burglar's Halo Stash is an incredibly simple, but incredibly powerful and probably broken card. It's an artifact for five in a green, so yay, green gets more powerful things. Oh gosh. Lands you control have tap, create a treasure token. I, I, I don't even know what to say, I mean, yeah, that is incredibly powerful. I never thought of something like this would ever exist. But now your lands can just, you know, make you artifacts that can just stick around and be fantastic temporary mana. It's like saving up mana, the ability to perfectly save up your mana, actually even more so than that. Even more perfectly because you can now generate basically any mana of any color from your lands perpetually. You just, you just get to hold on to that. It's kind of like, you know, Krufix, God of Horizons, you know, your, your mana pool doesn't empty, or Omnath, I guess, but, you know, those basically only work with either green mana or, you know, it turns the mana colorless. This is basically like, hey, uh, all those lands that you got, um, you can just save that mana for whatever you want, and it's any mana of any color! It's basically Chromatic Lantern plus Horizon Stone, but better, because there are more abusable things that you can do with it, and my goodness, are there ways to take advantage of this very simple ability. The number of commanders that want this card and really want it is going to be quite high. And yes, again, I do think that, well, this very well might be the most expensive card in the set. And um, this thing's going to get expensive really, really fast. So with all that said, blame Eddie in the comments below again. And let's jump into all the incredibly powerful things that you can do with this. And then let's talk about some commanders that really want this card. First up, yeah, untapping your lands works very well when your lands can tap to make treasure tokens, so how about cards like Wilderness Reclamation, Seedborn Muse, and Early Harvest? Wilderness Reclamation says, at the beginning of your end step, untap all lands you control. So, yes, right before your end step happens, cool. Um, let's just tap uh, all of our lands, uh, make a bunch of treasures. Oh my goodness, my lands untapped, great! Now, uh, before my next turn, uh, even if I don't spend all my mana, I can just tap all my lands again and just make a ton of treasure tokens that I can then utilize later. Y yeah, that, that's gonna get out of hand. Speaking of getting out of hand, 
Seedborn Muse. It has untap all permanents you control during each other player's untap step. So, of course, on top of untapping your lands, cool, you get to untap your other things, but most importantly, again, lands. Because, yeah, if you've got three opponents, you basically get to untap your lands four times with each trip around the table. So you essentially get to generate four times as much mana as you would be able to since you can store up that mana as treasures. This is absurd. I mean, even a one-off effect like Early Harvest or something like that, which is going to untap all basic lands, you know, target player controls, so, you know, target yourself, untap all your basics, you know, tap for treasures, tap them again. Even just a one-off effect can generate you a ton of mana. This can be a gigantic ritual that you can essentially just say, okay, I'm just going to store up this mana even though if I don't need it all now. I just, you know, save 20 mana essentially for me to use later. So yeah, any kind of way to untap your lands is obviously going to be very potent with this new card. Also, cards that make treasures just better, like Goldspan Dragon and Academy Manufacturer are definitely going to be ones that can work incredibly well in combination with Burglar's Halo Stash. Goldspan Dragon is a 4-4 dragon with flying in haste, but that doesn't matter. I mean, it, that still matters. But anyways, it says when it attacks, it becomes the target of a spell, create treasure token. So it matters a little bit. But the most important part of this card, though, is treasures you control have tap, sacrifice this artifact, add two mana of any one color. So this doubles up the potency of every single one of your treasures. So again, essentially, this is like, okay, um, not only do your lands, uh, you know, basically have chromatic uh, lantern in place, so they can tap for any color, but again, you can kind of store it up as you'd like to, you know, kind of like a horizon stone or, or a crew fix or whatnot. But also now uh, we're just going to double them up. It, it's kind of like a mana doubler as well, too. So yeah, there are just absurd things that you can do with this card. And you know what? Why not just have Academy Manufacturer in play to make things even more absurd? I mean, it's a 1-3 assembly worker that says, if you'd create a clue, food, or treasure token, instead create one of each. So yeah, now when you tap your, say, 10 lands to make 10 treasures, also coming with those 10 treasures are 10 clues and 10 food. So if you need life, or if you need to draw cards, you got it. Or, you know, if you just want to have an, an incredible amount of artifacts in play, you know, for things like, you know, a Blink Moth Urn or, you know, other things that care about the number of artifacts in play or sacrificing artifacts. And yeah, we'll get to some of those here in a bit. This can get also pretty absurd. There's just, there's just a lot of potential with this card. And yeah, it's going to be really expensive. And speaking of expensive cards that I've mentioned on a couple of episodes already during spoiler season that I need to keep quickly bringing up because, yeah, these cards are very good with a lot of things. Parallel Lives, Doubling Season, Primal Vigor, anything that can double up your tokens and token generation is going to be incredibly impactful, especially with Burglar Halo Stash. So now your lands say, all right, you know what? Instead of just making one treasure, let's make two. So again, you're essentially doubling up the amount of mana that you can store up with every single land, which is just absurd. But yeah, I mean, if you want these cards in the same deck, you're going to have to pay up because Parallel Lives is like $50, Doubling Seasons like 80 or so, and Primal Vigor I think is also around 50 I don't know. They're all very expensive. I don't think Burglar's Halo Sash is going to get to that price, at least not for the time being. I mean, it's going to be very expensive, and it may get there eventually. You never know. Regardless, some other cards that you definitely want to consider are cards like Married at Master and Martyr's Bond, which care whenever a permanent of a certain type goes into your graveyard. Married at Master has Fabricate 3, so you essentially can have it come into play with three counters on it to make it a 4-6, and it says whenever an artifact you control is put in a grave from the battlefield, target opponent loses life guilty Married at Master's power. So now your lands can essentially drain an opponent for four life each. You just, you know, tap your land, make a treasure. Cool, I'll sacrifice that for a man of any color. Awesome, all right. Billy over there, you lose four life. Uh, and now I'll do it again and again and again. Yeah, I mean, your lands can just take players out with this. And of course, your lands can also basically destroy things with Martyr's Bond now. It says whenever Martyr's Bond or another non-land permanent you control is put in a grave from the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a permanent that shares a card type with it. So tap your land for a treasure. Tap and sacrifice that treasure. Oh no, I lost an artifact. Oh, that means that all my opponents need to lose an artifact. Your opponents literally won't be able to keep any artifacts in play when you have this in play with Burglar's Halo Stash. So goodbye to your opponent's mana rocks and any hope they had at ever catching up to the green player. And speaking of green players, well, okay, more like Simic, but still, yeah, uh, one commander that really is going to want this card is Edrix and Nev Twincasters. It's a 2-2 Merfolk Wizard with Ward 2 that says, if one or more tokens would be created under your control, twice that many of those tokens are created instead. 
So yeah, do you want to parallel lives in your command zone? Great, because now you've got it and you can have your lands essentially tap and make two treasures each. Again, essentially doubling up the value of every single one of your lands and the amount of mana that you can store. And this is pretty absurd. Speaking of absurd, I mean, Chatterfang fans out there rejoice because this is absurd for you. Chatterfang is a 3-3 Squirrel Warrior with Forest Walk that says if one or more tokens would be created under your control, those tokens plus that many 1-1 green squirrel creature tokens are created instead. And by paying a blank, you can sacrifice X squirrels and target creature gets plus X minus X until end of turn. Um, so you, you know that card Squirrel Nest, which you can put on one of your lands to, to make uh, a squirrel when you tap that land? Uh, this is much better. Because now with Burglar's Halo Stash, uh, you tap your land, any of your lands, uh, you make a treasure, which also gives you a squirrel. And yeah, you just tap all your lands, make a ton of treasures, make a ton of squirrels. Good luck to your opponents when you get this going. Also, good luck to your opponents when you're playing against a Belladros Witherbloom deck and they get this out as well. Belladros is a 4-4 Elder Dragon that is flying and at the beginning of each upkeep, create a 1-1 one, one black and green pest creature token with when this creature dies, you gain one life and you can pay 10 life and untap all lands you control, activate only once each turn. So yes, this commander essentially just lets you Seedborn Muse, yes for life, and just for lands, but still that's really the most important thing. But still, on every single one of the turns, you can pay 10 life to untap your lands to then just store up all that mana in the form of treasures and then do it again and again. And obviously, with this kind of a deck, you're going to have plenty of ways to gain life, you know, just outside those pests. So you can just store up an absurd amount of mana. And yeah, there are plenty of ways to win from there. You know, like Marionette Master, which I already mentioned earlier. So have fun training your opponents out. But how about let's talk about another dragon, one that absolutely loves treasures with Corvold Fake Hearse King. Corvold is a 4-4, and whenever it enters the battlefield or attack, sacrifice another permanent, and whenever you sacrifice a permanent, put a plus one counter on Corvold and draw a card. You know how Chatterfang is absurd, you know, with this new card? Well, Corvold is probably even better because Corvold's like, all right, you, you get your squirrels, cool. Uh, I get counters to get larger whenever you basically just tap a land, and I also draw a card. I mean, even if you just take out that counter that goes on Corvold, which still can be incredibly impactful, obviously, you can, you know, one or two shot KO an opponent with this. Drawing a card from tapping a land is absurd, especially when you get mana from it as well that just stays perpetually. This card is going to be expensive for a reason, everyone. Next up, how about Mazarek, Crowd Death Priest, a 2-2 with flying that says, whenever a player sacrifices another permanent, put a plus one counter on each creature you control. So now essentially every single land that you tap is going to get a creature on every single creature you control. Obviously, you know, not right away, but whenever you want to, because you can just sacrifice those treasures, make a ton of mana, and get a ton of counters on your creatures, and your opponents are going to be very, 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 very knocked out of the game. Also, how about a commander like Vibictus Esmati the Dire, a 6-6 flying Elder Dragon that has when it attacks for each player, choose target permanent that player controls. Those players sacrifice those permanents. Each player who sacrificed a permanent this way reveals the top card of their library, then puts it on the battlefield if it's a permanent card. So first up, this commander can actually help you cheat out Burglar's Halo Stash off the top of your library, which is a very scary thing. And then, um, yeah, now you can just make yourself a ton of treasures, which then are just fantastic, you know, fodder for your commander to sacrifice to get even bigger things off the top of your library. Whereas your opponents, well, aren't gonna be so lucky with what you choose for them to sacrifice. And speaking of sacrificing, one final commander I'm going to talk about that Eddie sent over is Shattergang Brothers. Shattergang is a 3-3 Goblin Artificer that has paid 2 and a black, sacrifice a creature, each other player sacrifice a creature, and basically can do the exact same thing, but for red and artifacts, and for green and enchantments. So yeah, make a ton of treasures, which you then are saying, oh, okay, these are nice, but um, I can spare a few of them to sacrifice them to actually make sure that my opponents can have absolutely no artifacts in play. So again, just another way that green decks can ensure that those decks that count on mana rocks cannot keep up. But now as this episode is coming to a close, it's time for me to give you my final thoughts on Burglar's Halo Stash. And yeah, I don't think I can make it any more clear than I already have. This card is incredibly powerful. This card is going to be incredibly expensive, and there are some incredibly powerful, broken, busted things that you can do with this, and there's a lot of commanders out there that are really, really, really going to want this card, and the second that this hits the field with that commander, you're going to be in big trouble if you're playing against that player. 
But of course, outside of this crazy card, there are other crazy cards that have come out today, yesterday, and last week. There's a ton of awesome cards, so make sure you check out my other quick takes on those cards. And of course, make sure you stay tuned to this channel for even more exciting quick takes coming up. And also blame Eddie. Again, this entire episode is Eddie's fault. And with that, the show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are. And as always, thanks again and have a good one.